it might be, how do you give yourself the most money, put yourself in the best position where you can use it to the fullest? See what I mean? All right, so let's uh, break down the policy here. This will be fun. A lot of stuff going on. So what this represents here is a policy on a 45-year-old male where we are going to look at 100K per year for 10 years. And we could literally take a zero off or add a zero here from a performance standpoint and how the breakdown works. So the first thing we have is I want to understand how the base premium dollars work on a life insurance policy. Because I hear base premium, I automatically think insurance expense. That's what comes to my mind. I pay a premium if it's with a car insurance, auto insurance policy, homeowners insurance, liability insurance, a benefit is paid out if I have to make it clean. So naturally with life insurance product, I think the same thing, term life insurance. I pay a premium, if I die, money's paid out. Whole life insurance, a bit different, here's how. So I pay 10K per year, only into the base premium, so remember, money can go where? Premium or that PUA rider. This assumes here only the base premium. This column underlined, it, underlined and bolded represents the cash value generated from the base premium payments. So year one, you make the premium payment, $10,000. How much of that 10,000 shows up in cash value? Not much, just about zero, 300 bucks and change. So the annual internal rate of return on that payment is about negative 97%. You're yeah, not that attractive. I wouldn't want that. It takes approximately 12 years based off of the present dividend, dividend assumption of 5.65%, if that holds forever, about 12 years when I get my 100K back. I paid in 10K for 10 years, 100 total. That's when it comes back. Interesting. Now, what I want to highlight here is if we look at the annual IRR column, this represents how much I'm earning net after all the, all the insurance companies, fees, expenses, all that good stuff, year over year. So each year, the first five years are negative. Now look at year 10, it creeps up, but then year 10 to 11, it jumps. All, almost by 2%, 2.15 to 4.05%, the net yield on cash value. What triggered that specifically? RPU, reduced paid up option. We cut the premium off altogether. Even if this individual wanted to continue to fund the policy, at this point he wouldn't be able to because we eliminated the base premium. As a result, we get stronger cash values, but we trade off. The trade off is the death benefit. You will see it drop there. Now, over here, what we want to look at, we analyze the PUA specifically here, because the company's load for PUA payments is 5%. So we're going to get into more detail on this. Actually, why don't I lay it out now? So when I pay money into a policy, Adding money into PUAs, that's that cash dumping I always talk about. Okay, so PUA payments. Company's dividend rate is 5.65%. When I throw money into PUAs, it goes into cash value. Okay. This company tells me that there is a 5% load and expense charge on every single PUA payment I make. So when I hear that, if I make a PUA payment of 10 grand, 5% would be 500 bucks. And if the company's crediting a 5.65% dividend, that makes me think, well, why would I do that? Because it's only a 0.65% gain, right? The thing is, it's not. It is, in my opinion, a bit confusing just how an insurance policy works in this respect, but we're gonna break it down and show the net numbers here as we get into it. So on the left, base premium 10K, term rider cost. You see this gradually decrease over time. I would re refer you to our OYT, full transparency video, if you want more details on that. 
you've got your base premium, term rider cost, and then PUA payment. All of these numbers will equate to light blue over here in the total outlay, 100,000 per year for 10 years. That's the net number he wanted to see. Now this PUA rider payment gradually increases. The reason why is as the term cost decreases, he is replacing that payment with more PUA dollars. You'll notice the base premium does not increase. Base premium remains level, term cost goes down, and then what replaces the, the lost term dollars that we're not paying towards the term anymore are the PUA rider dollars. So we replaced it in a sense, keeping the same net of 100K, okay. Now, here is an important part. Circle this red. The PUA rider payment. First year, $88,627. The company's charge for PUA payments is 5%. 5% of that 88K would be about $4,400, $4,431. That's the, the charge if I just take a calculator and compute 5% of that 88K. Yet, that's not the case. So here in purple, PUA cash value. This column represents the cash value generated from PUA payments. So money I pay into PUAs and then dividends and interest that are credited to PUAs. That's what this column in purple represents. So if I make an 88K PUA payment, 5% is $4,400. That should be what, about 84.2 should show up net and cash value, but I've got 86, almost 87K. Where's the difference? Or why the difference? So these two columns, I'm gonna circle them in green, PUA growth, and then PUA, PUA annual IRR, internal rate of return. So the first year, even though we expected a $4,400 charge, the net charge was about $1,600, $1,700. And that if we break that down to a percentage, it was about, excuse me, 1.9% in year one. Now, as you look at year two, look what starts to happen here. The company charges the same 5% every time we make a PUA payment. But what is so interesting to me there's the alleged charge, but look at my annual PUA internal rate of return. It's just about 3%. The growth, and we're just measuring the pure PUA cash value. We backed that, backed that out from the total. I'll explain that in a minute here. But look at this. We're gonna look at the guarantees briefly too after all of this. Continues to grow. There's my net internal rate of return on PUA payments. And that is net of the 5% charge or 5% load. So interesting because again, I see that charge and 5% is on the low end when you look at a lot of insurance companies, yet my yield is positive at the end of the day. I have a positive, I have positive growth on my PUA payments, which is exactly why I put my into PUAs. All right, so let's continue here. So PUA growth, is doing what I want it to do, continuing to grow. Tops out at a little over 4%. Does it ever hit 5.65%? We can scroll down here, the answer is no. Never does. The reason why is that 5.65% is a gross dividend rate, credited, credited again after the insurance expenses, mortality charges, all that good stuff. So PUA cash value, again, represents the money we pay into PUAs. Why is this different though than the total cash value? Well, remember over here on the base premium example, when you pay money into base premium dollars, that does build equity for us. It builds cash value. Well, we've got that over here, base cash value. This is based off of the base premium only. And look at this. When you add these two columns together, you come up with a total cash value, breaking even year four. Now, what we do not have on this spreadsheet, 
because we broke it down a little bit differently here, you're going to see the next tab on the next tab is 5.65. That's the dividend rate. Their guaranteed floor is 4%. So what that means is if we were to look at the dividend column on an illustration, that would be the difference or it would assume the difference 1.65%, meaning the annual dividend column on an illustration never assumes the full dividend, the difference between the guaranteed rate and the declared dividend rate. If that makes sense. <laughs> oh, Steve, they did it again. All right, so here we go. So let's just scroll to the right here. Where we actually start to break down the true net numbers. Declared dividend, 5.65%. The column to the left of that, annual IRR, is really what I'm interested in. That takes my total net cash value and displays what am I actually earning every single year based off of the present dividend rate. So as this goes up or down, which is probably going to trickle down for at least the next 10 years or remain at a low level with what's going on in the interest rate environment, that means the IRR will likely trickle down a little bit as well. But with that said, there's my net IRR. This is what I'm actually earning on the policy. And then we have the dividend here. Cost, expenses, costs, expenses, and fees all on the far right. All we did here was if I look at year 10, too many columns here. Let's look at year 11, actually. Dividends 5.65, net is 4.09%. That means really the cost, 1.56%. We just backed into it is what we did here because a lot of this information is not disclosed by insurance companies really for competitive purposes. They don't want other carriers to figure out exactly what they're doing, which makes sense. And then real quickly, what we did as well, same exact study, but with the guarantees. What's interesting about this is when you study the internal rate of return, whenever you look at a guaranteed study, you're gonna see something like this. I'm just gonna circle year 15. Three one eight, three one eight, three one eight. All years after year 10, when we executed the reduced paid up, the IRR is gonna be identical here on base premium dollars, on PUA dollars, on everything. The reason why is the guaranteed rate from an insurance company is applied in a consistent manner to money I have allocated toward base premium and money I have allocated toward PUA dollars. Dividends, any surplus, everything above and beyond the guarantee of 4% is not credited in the same manner. It's actually a bit more favorable on base premium dollars over the long haul. However, right out of the gate, it does accelerate my PUA growth faster. So it's good to analyze both, but that's why I know that's deep, a bit technical here, but that's why I see consistent IRRs in that respect. But as always, hope this helps. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.